I think you're gonna like this one. What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today I'm really excited to show off two brand new streaming microphones from SteelSeries with their USB Alias, which is an all-in-one streaming microphone, and then we have the Alias Pro, which is an XLR mic that also contains its very own stream mixer. Now, as somebody who's tried to get more into streaming lately, hopefully you've caught our streams here on YouTube or over on whatnot. Um, balancing and really managing your audio could always be very challenging. Not only making sure you sound right to yourself, but everything else is equally mixed and balanced for the people who are listening. That's, you know, talking also things like background, gameplay volume, chat mixing, all that stuff. So with these new mics and their integration with Sonar, they really do their best to make everything easy. And like I said, an all-in-one solution with this ecosystem. So that's why I've definitely been interested to check these out. We'll take them out real quick for you guys and then we'll do a whole setup process, do the whole mic test so you could hear how they sound as we also go through and check out their features. So real quick for a feature overview, First, I got the Alias plugged in, and I wanna show you some of the onboard features that it has that I'm definitely a big fan of. So, first off, you can see when I'm talking, it picks that up with a volume level indicator here, showing you sort of a rough estimate of what your levels are at. And when you get too loud, you will see it turns red up top to let you know you're starting to peak. On the back side, there is a built-in gain dial, so you can adjust it all right here, real time. You also have a nice mute button, which as you press it like this, you get a nice big red X to let you know that you are muted. Very, very obvious front and center for you right there. So uh, should have no accidental muting going on. And you also have a little volume dial here. And this is what's going to let you balance your actual audio if you're monitoring it in your headphones, because also on the back bottom side, you have a built-in 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And then on the very, very bottom, you have just a RGB light. This does really nothing. <laughs> you could set it in, you know, the uh, SteelSeries software, but you can either have this, you know, static or do some of the colors, but that is there for some extra desktop flair. Built in on this stand with the shock mount, it feels really nice, looks really nice, I'd say as well. But if you don't wanna use it on this stand, you do also have an included boom arm adapter if you want to, you know, mount this to an external boom arm that you may already have in your room, if you wanna have this just closer to your face, um, anything like that. So you do have those options, but Yes, that's the sort of quick, rough overview of the Alias. And now for the Alias Pro. Like I was saying, not only is it your microphone, but it comes with its very own mixer. With it being named the Pro, I would say this is for more of the Pro streamer or the more frequent streamer, because this gives you more flexibility. First off, you can, you can sort of just like have your mic there and forget it instead of interacting with it like you would on the Alias. You would just interact with the mixer here. But with this being XLR and the fact that the mixer itself has two separate USBs on the back, this lets you connect this to two different PCs at once for the dual streaming setup. So there's more than what meets the eye. Let's bring this back to the PC. We'll get it all set up so you can hear the sound tests and really what they're all capable of. All right, so now we're gonna dive into the meat and potatoes really of this review where we're gonna check out the Alias Pro, its features and the mic quality, which is by the way, this is how it sounds right now. We're gonna go through Sonar, show off all the different preset EQs and the features that it has you can enable inside of Sonar to really get the most out of this microphone. And what we're also gonna do is after we introduce and show off the Alias Pro, we're gonna do a mic comparison to the cheaper alternative in the Alias and also go through a different aspect of Sonar. So there's gonna be four parts, two in each, but trust me, there's a lot to go over. It might be overwhelming at points, but try your best to pay attention and wear headphones because this is truly gonna be a streamer's best friend. So let's just dive right in. Like I said, we're testing out currently the Alias Pro. It is a one inch condenser capsule inside. 
which that one inch capsule is about three times larger than your average microphone capsule out there. So this is really gonna give your voice the opportunity to really shine in like a, a stupid kind of comparison there, but it's designed in the cardioid pickup pattern to pick up what's directly in front of it. So it's gonna really make your voice stand out versus other microphones that have a smaller capsule. It is a 24 bit, 48 kilohertz. And again, with this XLR alias pro, it goes right into their stream mixer, which I'll show you guys as well as like a sort of over the shoulder shot. And you have four buttons. Well, there's two dials and two buttons. The left button with the LED ring around it, as you can see, it goes from green, yellow to red, the louder that I talk. This is the gain dial, which adjusts your microphone, uh, the audio levels for this directly. You also have a nice mute button button. So when you press that, it glows red, lets you know the mic is muted. And the buttons to the right of that are actually configurable inside of Sonar, so they can control really whatever you want. Uh, these left two buttons are not programmable. They are stock controlling the gain and muting this microphone. So this control, this can be like controlling just your Spotify audio, your game audio. And this can mute whatever track you want. So those two are configurable, which is really cool. And then like I said, with the mixer letting you uh, stream via two PCs, it makes it super easy. You have one USB going right to your streaming PC and another USB going right to the PC where you're gonna be gaming on. So it makes it very, very easy to just get it all plugged in and stream and capture whatever you're doing, game, all have that adjustment right on the fly with the mixer, which is really cool. So we're going to dive into Sonar because there's a lot of things going on in terms of the uh, EQs and the presets, which are going to be pretty helpful to a lot of you guys. Everything you've been hearing right now is the default sound setting. So if you want to go in and enable the equalizer, as you see, we do have a five band EQ right here. It can go up to a 10 band EQ. So this lets you adjust, you know, pretty much everything from the sub bass, the bass, the lows, mids, uppers, and high ends. And you also have a nice little, uh, little pulley here, which lets you sort of stretch or adjust or smooth out the, uh, the EQ as well to really, you know, customize your sound EQ. This has all been default. They also have settings for like the Alias Pro and the Alias, whether it's on the boom arm or the desk stand. So this is currently on the boom arm. So now I'll put it over to the boom arm sound setting. Um, for these, I do think that's the way that I sit when my desk is configured. Uh, the actual desk stand it comes on is too small. So I would recommend putting this on a boom arm so that way it's closer to being, you know, right in front of your mouth. But again, this is the boom arm setting. We also now have balanced. And again, you can see where it has this sort of pre-tuned EQ and you can go in and adjust all those on the fly as well. So like I was saying, they just make it very, very uh, easy to use. Broadcast high pitch is the next setting. What we have here, as you'll see, is pretty much killing all the bass and the sub bass here with an emphasis really in the, the mids and a little bit of sparkle in the high end. So this is broadcast high pitch. We now have broadcast low pitch, definitely looking sort of like an opposite of that where the bass is, you know, being emphasized here and we have a bit of a drown out in the mids. So this is broadcast low pitch. Now, clarity high pitch is pretty much, you know, again, killing everything from the mids and belows with a super emphasis on that high end sparkle in the mids for your voice, probably sounding a bit more sibilant as well. Then clarity low pitch, not too much of a difference, a little bit more of a uh, normal bump in the bass here around the the uh, the low mids to the sub bass at about minus three decibels. So you do have a bit more of an emphasis there versus the high pitch one. Then you have deep voice, which is definitely going to make your voice sound very deep and smooth. You know what I'm saying? So one of the things I do uh, that I've heard from this before, because again, I tested all this prior, is deep voice is going to give you that emphasis in the bass, obviously. But also, with it being relatively close to your mouth, deep voice has an issue, I would say, with plosives. So if you're an aggressive talker like me, you, you tend to emphasize your P's and your T's a lot more. This does pick that up pretty, uh, pretty well, as you can probably tell. 
Now you have the less nasal, which is aimed to make your voice sound less nasally. And this is interesting because a lot of, you know, crappy microphones out there or just lower quality or cheaper microphones, they do tend to sound nasally, especially if you're wearing like a headset and that microphone is going to sound very nasally or tinny. This is interesting because you can actually use sonar with any other headset or any other microphone you want. It's not just limited to SteelSeries' very own microphones. So this you can use with anything. And that's also interesting because you could even use this mixer with, an, with another XLR mic. So you have a lot of flexibility with this whole ecosystem, which is why I really, really like sonar. So this is the less nasal setting. And then lastly, you have walkie-talkie if you want to sound like walkie-talkie for whatever reason. Not my favorite. Back to default, and I'm just going to reset that because we made that EQ before. But yes, back to default. Now, another thing you have in here are a few, a few more adjustments. You do have their ClearCast AI noise canceling. So just to give you an idea real quick, uh, I'm just going to type in the background just to give you an idea of the noise canceling. Now, currently it is set to off. I'm doing this so you could hear the sound of the switches. They are lubed tactile switches. So not as harsh as something like, you know, clickies, but a bit louder, obviously, than linears. So that was me typing with it off. Now I'm going to turn it on. It's about halfway. I'm going to do the same thing. And it does a pretty good job overall at eliminating that background noise and that sound. And obviously with that slider there, you have the ability to um, adjust it more to make it more aggressive or less aggressive. I think it probably just again from my prior testing, it does cut out about, you know, 50% of the audio versus when it was off. This is also going to be great for if you have... I don't know, a dog barking in the background, a uh, an air conditioner in the same room if your PC fans are really, really loud right next to you. Having this on will drown out all of that. It does take a little bit away from your voice, but honestly, not enough to where I'd say it's unusable. And again, you also have that slider, so you can make it really minimal. Their AI noise canceling, I think, is really good, despite it saying early access. We also have some manual noise reduction settings here that you can't enable with the AI on. Things like a background noise eliminator and an impact noise eliminator for things like, you know, touching your, your desk or the boom arm or whatever. Uh, so you do have the options to enable these if you want to sort of manually tune the, uh, the noise canceling. But um, honestly, I would just be fine with leaving the AI noise canceling on if you do want to drown out some of that background noise. Then we have compressor, which I do like to keep on at around 30%. Compressor just pretty much makes sure that your, your talking and your voice levels never get too loud or too quiet. So if you've been streaming for like an hour, you're starting to like mellow out and your voice tends to get a bit lower and maybe something happens in game where you get really heated and loud, it makes it so the lowest of the lows and the highest of the highs aren't a drastic quick change. It keeps it all within a reasonable threshold, which is what you want. You don't want it to be super low and then super high at the same time. So it compensates for when your voice is on the lower end versus when you get loud and yelling. So it doesn't and blow out your viewers eardrums so this is sonar again with the alias pro very very user friendly maybe you know admittedly a lot to get into at first if you're trying to really figure out what all this stuff is but in terms of all of the other sort of eq software out there and stuff that lets you mix your audio quality and your audio levels and your different sources which we'll touch on in just a minute they make it really user friendly once you spend some time to get to learn it and that's the thing that i love about this it's all just easy um again alias pro now we're going to switch over to the usb alias which is the same exact mic capsule so it's going to be exactly the same for a less price point We'll switch it up. Okay, so now we're switched over to the USB alias, and as you could hear, it is, like I said, the same exact capsule inside as the Alias Pro. This just USB versus XLR, and you have the onboard controls versus the mixer with the Alias Pro. So as we showed off in the little intro we just did, we have the volume level indicators here in terms of those five LEDs. We also have the touch sensitive mute button, 
You get the nice big red X, a volume dial on the bottom, which can control your headphones because you can plug them directly into this microphone to either act as headphones to hear your PC audio or to monitor side tone. And then on the back to control your actual gain of the microphone, you do have a volume dial. And to get this just out of the way real quick, um, this is like my one really only complaint physically with this mic is that first off the dial is in an awkward spot it's small and it's right where the shock mount sort of meets the back so there's not a lot of clearance here at all so it makes finding it sort of you know iffy i wish it was either on the bottom like in the back here or up top so it, i could just you know adjust it easier and also with this, it's reversed of what I'm used to. I guess it's sort of meant to where you could use it upside down, but then everything else in terms of the icon stuff would be reversed. So for example, in order to you know increase the gain, you would think you would want to turn it clockwise, right? To the right side. However, doing that, as you could hear, turns the volume down. Turning it to the left counterclockwise is what increases the gain. It's very, very odd to me. I don't know if I'm just like not used to, I don't know. It's, I feel like it should be reversed. Anyways, we're not gonna spend time in the mic setting here in Sonar because like I said, it's all the same as the Alias Pro, which I just showed you with all the different EQs. What we are gonna do is spend time in the mixer tab because this is where Sonar really comes to life and just what adds to the overall package of these alias microphones that makes it so user-friendly and easy to begin streaming. Now, what's really cool about this, and I did a whole video on Sonar when it first launched or was maybe like a beta last summer, um, you have different submixes and virtual channels for all the apps you would need for streaming. And it makes it really easy to do with these sort of drag and drop sort of apps that you can route. So I'm just doing it here for example, but whatever sort of app you want to be routed to a certain sub channel or something, you have that all right here to do. And you'll see it's broken up into master, game, chat, media, aux, and microphone. Master is obviously gonna be your uh, your master audio for everything that would be pretty much combining all these other five submixes into the master. I currently have that disabled because I am recording into Adobe Edition for you guys, and I don't want the master audio to be a real time mix of the game and Spotify and Discord. I want you guys to hear the microphone instead of all that. So usually these would be active, but for the sake of this audio demo, I have that uh, disabled. Game. Game is gonna be currently what I have in the background, again, for an example for you guys, which is Star Wars Battlefront 2, and I have a Google Chrome tab pulled up just to give you guys another example. Chat would be things like Discord. Media could be, like I have here, having Spotify in the background or whatever music app you use to listen to music. Aux is if you want to you know, plug in like speakers or something, you can also have that as an output. And then the microphone, obviously. Now, what you'll notice under all these different tabs is two separate icons with a headphone and a little, uh, this is like the live, like the streaming icon. The headphone is what I would be listening to. So this is my personal mix, which you can adjust on the fly versus the streaming mix, which you can also adjust. And why this is really interesting and cool to have in Sonar like this is because you can route what you hear versus what the stream or what the viewers hear from your stream real time. So just to give you an example, for the game tab, I have uh, in Google Chrome, I have Lo-Fi Beats pulled up. Uh, just, you know, as acting as a background track for the stream in this hypothetical and Star Wars Battlefront for the audio that you guys would be hearing. So I could have the stream for that all the way up and then personally turn it down. So I hear it at about 60% volume. You guys hear it at about 90%. However, if I go over here to the media tab in Spotify, I can listen to whatever music I want that you guys won't hear. So as you can see over here for the stream tab, I have that turned all the way down to zero. And in Spotify, I could bump whatever music that I want to hear that I can't play on stream for copyright reasons. So I can listen to the whole, the brand new Blink-182 album on my own during the stream and you guys will not hear that. And you can have that independent uh, virtual mixing for all of these different uh, channels and stuff mixed and mastered real time. So you can just quickly and easily go over into OBS or, you know, whatever Streamlabs you use and now either just use the master channel 
Or since all these are independent virtual channels, you can set one of these. I, I'm probably doing a, a bad job of explaining all that because it is sort of overwhelming and it's a lot of information at once. But I think this gives you an idea of all what Sonar is capable of. And even more why this is all so important and cool to have these different virtual submixes is when you are streaming, or say you're not even streaming, say you're just using OBS for game capture. Since they're all their own independent virtual channels, you can have them be all recorded separately. So when you're, you know, recording gameplay, instead of it all being mixed, just one channel, you know, say you want to balance your microphone and the game and the music independently, these could all be saved independently versus again, just one output. Now, what's also really cool about this is you have all those different EQs that I showed you before for each of those different submixes that I just showed. So say the game, you know, say I'm playing something like Counter-Strike, right? You can go in and EQ your game for your chat. So yeah, say we're playing the new CSGO. Now I can completely EQ how the game sounds for you guys. You have all the EQ options right here, just like I showed you with the mic options. And what's really cool is they also not only have it broken down to sub bass, bass, lows, the mid range, uppers, and the highs, you can actually pinpoint and pick what those actually are. So if you're not, you know, big into EQing, you don't know much about it, you're not like really invested in this stuff, this makes it easy for the average gamer or streamer to understand. So this shows you what the bomb sounds are, what the footsteps are, some of that immersion on the lower end, you can drown that all out. So you do have an emphasis here, as you can see, in footsteps in the bomb for disarming. And you'll notice right here, this is that really high pitched flashbang sound. So that obviously is very jarring. This, in this uh, specific CS2 by Phase Twist, uh, you can just completely drown all that out. So it's not very loud for your audience. And like I said, they have a bunch of different EQs for a bunch of different games. Warzone, Diablo, Destiny, uh, different like, you know, FPS, FPS Footsteps, all the different games in here. Now, I can also mix my chat. Remember, like, like I told you guys before, with that whole less nasally, this chat would be what I'm routing into Sonar via Discord. If you remember when I had that pulled up, Discord was tied to the chat channel. So when you guys are listening to it, say the friends that I'm playing with just have really bad microphone quality. I can EQ their own microphones for them so it sounds better for you guys like this less nasally EQ that I showed off before. You can also EQ the music, which I had in the Spotify tab, the aux, which I have disabled because nothing, nothing else is plugged into this, and then the microphone tab, which I just showed you. So again, it's a lot at first, but once you get the hang of tying whatever apps you frequently use to whatever apps that you're gonna need for streaming or recording gameplay, it becomes pretty easy easy and user friendly considering all the different EQ options you have and the fact that they break it down into those different um, EQ bands for things like immersion, footsteps, the bombs, um, stuff like that, gunshots. They do their best at making it user friendly, which I really, really dig. My only real issue is right now with Sonar and I believe this whole apps to be routed drag and drop thing is still relatively early for like an early access feature. Um, sometimes they don't always show up in the apps to be routed. So the drag and drop thing, I'll have to do something like, you know, quit the app and then relaunch it for it to pop up. But that's something that I expect to be improved and changed since it is, you know, an early access feature, but it is available right now. So I wanted to bring that up. And really, besides the actual gain knob on the back here, um, I don't have a lot of issues overall with this microphone. I think it's really, really well polished, this and the Alias Pro. And the only real other thing that I could really nitpick at as we start to round this out is I wish Sonar had the ability to give me a level threshold for the LED lights on both the actual microphone and with the mixer for the Alias Pro. Meaning that when it shows me the green, yellow, and red lights on them, I want to be able to set a volume level indicator for what those lights are.
Like when it's yellow, I want to know what actual volume level I'm reaching. Am I approaching neg negative six to negative three? Am I at zero decibels? What level would, you know, uh, the greens be? So I wish I could, you know, fine tune those so I have a better idea of what my actual levels are. There's only five LEDs on here. So again, it's pretty a rough estimate, like we said. And even on the mixer for the Alias Pro, it can go from green to yellow to red all within a two word span so it's sort of finicky there if i just had that control of the leds and what uh, color these certain volume ranges were that would be great they do have you know actual led controls for like the light on the bottom of here and the bottom of the light bar on the alias pro but that's just like showing uh color effects this i'm talking about the actual volume level leds now at the end of the day the alias the usb alias comes in at 180. if you look at the current competition out there some of the top leaders like the quadcast s from HyperX, the elgato wave 3 those are 150 ish some of them are on sale because they've been out for a few years now so i think 180 for this is very very fair considering like i talked about before the capsule inside with that one inch capsule is three times larger than your average usb mic and again just the user-friendly integration with sonar i do think gives this the edge over the other you know gaming microphones out there in this price range this sounds incredible the alias pro is 320 definitely a bit of a heftier price tag yes uh, but also you have to factor in that it includes the mixer so when you're talking about like a professional microphone you're also going to be looking at things like some of the Bayer Dynamic mics, Shure, Audio-Technica, those XLR cardioid mics are definitely a bit pricey, but they also don't include the mixer. So you have that all-in-one integration, and again, the fact that it is really made for streaming in dual PC setup. Now, you may be wondering then, what's the difference between the USB alias and the XLR alias Pro? If There's a big difference in price, but they're both using that same microphone. And the, the fact of it is, it just depends on what's going to be easiest for you in your current setup. Obviously, with a USB mic, it's plug and play. You have your controls on here. So very user friendly in that sense. But the advantage you get with the Alias Pro is the fact that XLR is the industry standard when it comes to, you know, using that audio hookup and that connection. So you can use your Alias Pro microphone with a higher grade audio interface or something like that. Plug it into your camera if it is XLR. You have more of that versatility with its use case because of XLR being the industry standard for audio versus, you know, just a USB mic. So it all depends really what you're looking for what your use case is and really what level of a streamer you are because this is going to be fine for 75% of the people out there it sounds great it's the same mic on on the fly uh, controls right at your fingertips versus using the mixer for the alias pro over XLR but again sort of two different use cases but they're both gonna get the job done at the end of the day and they both sound just incredible for their price I think they're both worth it and like i said very minor issues at the end of the day with my only real complaint hardware wise being the very tiny uh volume the gain dial here on the alias so guys that'll wrap it up for my review of the alias and the alias pro hope you all enjoyed if you want to check them out i'll put a link for you in the description down below and if you like this video and it helped you out give it a big thumbs up to show your support Feel free to follow me on Twitter at randomfrankp. And lastly, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you all enjoyed. Have a good day.